while nothing's happening, money's coming my way. There's cash flow. Dividend investing gives you the ability to have passive income coming from the dividends that the companies are giving on a regular basis. Exemplary, look for the ones that have extra cash. Look for the ones that are still earning, consistently earning. Some of them, their earnings might be a bit choppy, but as long as they have more, they have enough for their operations expansion and they have enough to give over, then those are the companies that you would want to position into if you are into dividend investing. Hi everyone, so in this video, I want to talk about dividends. I want to give you an update. How relevant is dividend investing still in May 2021? So please do note, now, while I'm making this video, they just gave a disclosure also on the GDP of the Philippines. It's not as good as what everyone expected it to be. It was much, much lower than expectations. We still contracted. We got a negative 4.2. 2% growth, meaning the GDP contracted by 4.2% compared to the very, very low base already for the first quarter of 2020. So 2020 was not good. People were expecting the GDP for quarter one to be much, much better. But the fact that we contracted still and it was worse off than what everyone else expected it to be or what analysts computed it to be, it just shows the state you know, of how long the recovery will be in the Philippines. This may not be for a lot of people who don't want the cash flow that's given off by dividends, but for me, I like the predictability of it. Eh? That if you notice it over the past few days, US markets, we've seen a lot of downward volatility. And in the Philippine markets, you've also noticed it that over the past months, it really hasn't gone anywhere. There's really no upward shift in the Philippine markets. And what I like about dividends is while nothing's happening, Money's coming my way. There's cash flow. Dividend investing gives you the ability to have passive income coming from the dividends that the companies are giving on a regular basis. And that's what makes it interesting that should this bearish slash sideways market continue to drag on for the next few months, if you own dividend stocks, then you get your cash flow. And that's why we're reviewing it also today. Let's see if the yields are still very interesting. Let's see also if it's something worth getting into. So please do note as what I've mentioned, this may not be for everyone because if you are at a point where you want to accumulate and you are at the point that you are in for growth, then maybe dividend investing passive income and cash flow is not for you and if you're watching this and you've been watching my crypto videos where we've seen amazing returns not just for the large ones not just for the ones that are connected to dexes but even the smaller ones right now have been massively moving up as well but i'll say this and i've been consistent in saying this in a lot of my videos that the more i've been putting in the crypto markets i've still been putting in the philippine and u.s stock markets as a way to balance myself out because we don't know it. Eh. And I don't want to be super reckless. I don't want to be, okay, I like the crypto markets massively, but I know I won't be able to play a perfect game. I don't know when the next crash will happen. And the way that I get to protect myself is every time I put into the crypto markets, I will continually stack also for the stocks that I would like to hold for the long term. Dividends in all intents and purposes are not guaranteed. Meaning, it can also be slashed. That's why if you watch the older videos where I talked about dividends, some of them who gave high dividends in 2019 have slashed their dividends in 2020 because their income got hit. And in the same way, as the economy continues to drag on, malaki yung chance that they may not give also dividends still. So please remember this. The style right now, if you are investing in Philippine markets, given that the economy is not where it used to be, the style, the technique, and the narrative is look for the ones that will still be exemplary. Look for the ones that have extra cash. Look for the ones that are still earning, consistently earning. Some of them, their earnings might be a bit choppy, but as long as they have more, they have enough for their operations expansion and they have enough to give over. Then those are the companies that you would want to position into if you are into dividend investing. If you are into dividend investing, even if the stock drops, two months from now, they will release dividends. You will be entitled to it as well. Since I'm not as young as when I started in my early 20s in the markets, stockpiling and buying as much stocks that give me dividends is something that 
make sense to me. So in this video also, I'm not going to include preferred shares. We're going to do that for maybe some other time. But we're going to revisit some of the dividend paying stocks that I would talk about then give some inputs about it as well i want to start everything off with spc last year it gave us the highest dividend yield so let's look at it from now so please do note that the stock prices that i'm putting in here are based on may 11 2021 and please do note also for some they've given already portions of their dividends so I'm just going to make an assumption also that, for example, you bought it for this year until next year, hawak mo siya and assuming that they would give the same amount of dividends just so we have a benchmark on how we slot it and how we do it. We're going to talk about specific individual stocks here. And I say this over and over, never ever buy any of these stocks just because you hear it off of YouTube. It's your money. It's your responsibility. Please take the time to do your own research and your own due diligence to be able to have a firm conviction of what you're getting into for you to be able to not panic should there be any uncertainty around because there's still a lot. Eh? We are not at the point where the economy is something where everyone's excited about it but in the midst where everything's scary there's still a lot of opportunity around that being said spc the stock price is at 10.44 pesos per share and they already gave 0.4 at the first half of this year assuming that they follow suit no from what they did from last year they would give another 0.4 so there's a total of 0.8 per dividend yield given the stock price of 10.44 is still at 7.66 percent so it's fairly decent it's fairly good it would beat a lot of those fixed income instruments and two things that i'd like to mention about spc is number one it's hard to get large allocations of it because it's not as liquid so meaning if you'd like to make a position into it you have to stagger your buys little chunks lang you won't be able to get uh, in large bulks that's one of course as an investor you'd like to pick something up at the lowest price possible the lower it is the higher your dividend yield would be the lower it is the higher your potential return also would be. But it's not going down. And I think, no, even though it would not go down, people are still picking it up at these levels because the dividend yield is still very, very, very high. And comparing it to 2019, the 0.8 dividends that they gave last year and they could potentially give also this year, is much, much lower than what they gave in 2019. Since it's a energy company, I think it's something that's relevant. It's something that's needed. And if you'll follow the theme of how I'm going about this, we want companies that are still predictable in their earnings that as much as possible, given that we are not yet out of this pandemic, we are not yet out of this recession, you want something that could give you a sense of predictability. Number two are two telcos that I always talk about because they're very, very consistent also in giving out dividends and in the midst of where things could possibly be still, that we're still working from home, a lot of people are not going out. The use and the subscription of the internet would help boost the revenues of these two companies as well. So for PLDT, it closed with a stock price of 1064 It already gave out first part of its dividends earlier this year also. But assuming that it gives almost the same for its August dividend payout, we're looking at around 78 pesos per share. And that would give you a dividend yield of around 6.17%. In the same way for Globe, it's 1860 It already paid out once this year. It's giving out another one in the next few days. But Globe would give out dividends on a quarterly basis. So I'm making an assumption that it could give somewhere around 110.16. So please do note, note the two quarters for the year are still assumptions. So let's just peg it at 110.16. That would give you a dividend yield of 5.92. Very, very interesting stats right now. PLDT at 6.17 globe at 5.92 so again in my opinion spc pldt and globe the revenue that they will get even in this pandemic they're not as badly hit as other companies and in all intents and purposes from what we saw last year they were much much better off than other companies in other sectors going back to the energy sector which i believe is also a bit defensive in nature i'm talking about meralco Though, of course, there's lesser use for power right now. Since we're in lockdown, not everyone's going to offices, etc. Consumption of electricity, at least from an office perspective, yun yung natamaan. But again, similar to what I said for Globe, PLDT, and also SPC, I think Meralco also is defensive enough in nature that it will be better off as compared to other sectors that are heavily hit in the pandemic. Meralco closed at 274 for today. An assumption also for its dividends 
we're looking at 12.52 pesos per share. That would give you a dividend yield of around 4.57%. So fairly decent. Again, lower than what you could get in cryptos, especially if you're doing yield farming. However, it's decent enough for people who are conservative. It's decent enough for people who want to be in the stock market, especially in the Philippines. It's decent enough that it's still a fixed amount of money that you can get on a regular basis. So we have four. And to round up everything, let's talk about ARIT. ARIT, I like it still because the income is predictable given that the rent that they are receiving from their tenants is pretty much secure. They almost have full occupancy and their tenants are locked for a very, very long period of time. And for those watching this, ARIT dipped last week ng 32 something yan, but it went up again right away. By the time of this recording, it's around 34.15. So I'll make two assumptions here that if its dividend is around 1.32, you could get a dividend yield of 3.86%, which is fairly lower already no, as compared to when it dipped last year. If you bought it last year below 25, then your dividend yield would have been massively, massively higher. I just want to add this no, since they had a lot of acquisitions attached to their project. What if they give around 1.7 for their quarterly dividend payout? Given the current stock price, you would get 4.97% in terms of dividend yield. So, which is very, 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 very decent. So, among all of the dividend stocks, remove some of the preferred shares. I like this five in terms of predictability that you have something that three months, six months, nine months, 12 months down the line, you know that I could sleep soundly at night because I know it's very, very predictable. For the ones asking for DDMPR, no, I don't know how many payouts they will do for the year, but from what I've seen, they've released one for 2021 so far, 0.0204. At the current price right now at 2 pesos, you are at 1.02%. So what's interesting there is if they give it quarterly, then you could possibly multiply it by 4, so you would be around 4%. If you bought it at the listing, your yield right now would be lower also. Please remember, the name of the game when you are into dividends is the lower you get it, the better it will be for you. I want to add four more, but these are the ones that are not really part of my dividend core, but they've shown good dividend yields in the past years. And at least even for 2021, it's still fairly decent. GMA7 gave a dividend of 1.35. Its current stock price right now is at 8.55 pesos per share. That gives you a dividend yield of around 15.8%. So please do note, no, I think the biggest trigger of this is last year, ABS-CBN was shut down. Their biggest competitor, actually the number one network in the Philippines got shut down. So if your number one competitor is out of the picture, a big chunk of the revenue that used to go to ABS-CBN got funneled also to GMA7. Now they became a solid number one pretty much in the Philippines in the same way that produced the spike in its dividends. So let's monitor this over the next years. I don't know kasi how relevant would ads be also in TV over the next five years, over the next 10 years, given that the fact that you're watching this video in YouTube speaks to the fact that attention is also shifting elsewhere. Two more. They're highly connected. DMC, SCC. Please do note, DMC is the holding company and DMC owns shares for SCC. So what happens also to DMC is highly correlated to how SCC performs. Please remember Semerara is a mining company. Please remember DMC has exposure to construction, property development, mining. They also have utilities attached to it via Mineland. The dividend of DMC is at 0.48 pesos. Its stock price is at 5.42, giving you a dividend yield of 8.85. So please do note, they already gave that out. It's under the assumption that if they give this next year and you buy at this stock price, it's around 8.85. Again, I'll say this, the risk is if they give something lower than that for next year, then your yields also would be lower. I'll just reiterate this, that please do note also while we are in this economy, property development companies have also been hit. It's not like the Meralcos of this world or the Telcos where people have been paying and subscribing on a regular basis. Semerara 12.6, they also gave out their dividend already but it's at 1.25. So should they give out at 1.25 next year again at this current price, your dividend yield would be around 9.92%. Fairly decent, very, very high, even higher than the others that I've mentioned in this list. Before I go to the last stock that I'd like to mention, for those who were not able to join our Stock Smarts Technical Analysis course and then you requested for it, we are having another run this July. We're going to talk about MACD, Moving Average, Parabolics R, Bollinger Bands, Trend Lines, Support and Resistance, 
candlesticks, and everything else in between. For those who want to join us in that seminar, the link is in the description below. If you want to learn, you want to join, and you want to use technical analysis, not just for the stock market, but also for the cryptocurrency market because we've been integrating it as part of our lessons with the goal that you get to use the charts not just for the Philippines, but you get to use the charts also as you start to trade other markets outside the Philippines as well. And also, I'd like to invite you to the largest investment conference in the country, ICON 2021. We have a variety of topics there and we have a variety of experts there speaking from Diwa Gunigundo, Tony Herbosa, Rex Mendoza, Rosemary Rafael, Ramon King, and so much more. Join us as we talk about a variety of topics more than a thousand people will be part of that event. And what's interesting about that, the whole goal is just to impart and give as much information as possible so that you can execute and invest. So if you want to join us for that, links are in the description below. Lastly, I want to talk about Aboit is Power. Again, another energy company. So if you're looking at the team no, on how I'm segmenting this, my focus will always be on the ones that give me predictability. So the technique for those who are watching this for the first time, technique for dividend investing is you always have to ask how sustainable are the dividends, how predictable are the dividends because the future earnings that you will get is highly dependent on how good they are and re earning repeatedly more so that you can get also your dividends in return. So about this power, 23.7 pesos per share. Its dividend is 0.85 given. That gives you a dividend yield of around 3.58%. So this is the lowest in the list but if you want something that's predictable, I think it's something that you can add as part of your portfolio. Not solely there because if, it, if everything's there, as inflation continues to go higher, then you could possibly get hit as well or at least the value of what you're earning will be lesser than what inflation is. Let me just summarize everything. SPC, PLDT, Globe, Meralco, ARIT. Then we have then we have SEC, DMC, GMA7, and AP. I talked a bit about DDMPR, but I would like to see how their payouts would be in the next few quarters also to see how high the yields would be for DDMPR. So that's it. Um, for those who want more videos like this, put in your questions down below and we'll try to make more videos for all of you. As you all know, the goal and the heart of this is to educate you, for you to have the right information, for you to be able to decide properly on how to invest and how to trade the markets with confidence. For those who also want to invest in the U.S. stock market, I'd like to introduce eToro. It allows you to buy U.S. stocks, but not just U.S. stocks. It allows you to buy commodities, cryptocurrencies, and also allows you to trade the Forex markets all in one go. So if you want that exposure and you want to invest in that, those type of asset classes, I'll put the link in the description below so you can also start to invest and enter into that. For those who want to grab a copy of my books, the link is in the description below. Check it out. It says out of stock, but that's only for the set. We still have four other books that I've written that are national bookstore bestsellers also that will help you. So you can check it out. And it may seem that hindi ganun kataas yung earnings pag dividends. Oh, pero it's consistent. It's predictable. It's something that will help you also should markets go down, should a crash happen. You have something that you can expect. And I've been saying this over and over. It's the boring things in life that will make you rich. It's something that's consistent that you know, no matter how bad things are, that there's something consistent that can come your way. So at least for me, May 2021, dividend investing is still part of my portfolio. So that's it for now. This is Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys. And God bless you all.